third game in a row coming out of the bye, and Washington wins their third in a row. Welcome to the Coach and Crew Show. Man, that was a little stressful at times, especially at the end. We're going to break it down, Devin, Phil, and myself, and go over it and give our initial reactions. Normally, when we record these things, we've had time to process and let things go because two of the three of us are old men. 1130 is probably late for us, and so we're going to process it right on the spot. I'm going to go first since I'm the one starting and talking. Since my nickname is The Coach, and I, I've either earned that title or just forced myself with that title, I'm going to start with this. I'm going to go a solid B for coaching tonight. Solid B, and here's why. 41 minutes time possession, phenomenal. The, the length of multiple drives, phenomenal. Most of the play calling, most of the play calling, not all the plays, and you can dissect some ones that I, I thought were just simply bad play calls, was good. But at the end of the day, you only put up 17 points and did not close the game out. So there's the B side on the offense. The defensive side overall gets an A minus that stupid GD defense. Did they not watch the Iron Bowl this past weekend or any other game in the history of professional or collegiate football prevent defense, prevents you from winning? Having said that, they did make the stop. There's my first takeaway. Phil, what's your initial take? Well, we'll start with the defense. There were 10 guys that had heck of a game. There's a guy named num- with a number 20 that should get cut. Period. End of story. I mean, he doesn't man. need to be on the team. All right? <laughs> Period. The two rookie defensive ends were the three of them that rotate in. They were great. They were fantastic. The DT is great. Linebackers, Jamin Davis looks better every single stinking game. And even though I have bagged on Landon Collins now for 30 months, he had a hell of a game. And you can tell when he left the game how bad we were on that prevent defense. Landon Collins, man. I was like, God, we can't cut this guy as soon as we can cut him, get rid of him. I'm thinking about, let's see if we can keep him. And then offense, most of the time it was pretty good. But let's just face it. Scott Turner sometimes just has his head up his butt and starts calling things that Taylor Heineke just can't do. And when he does that, it's bad. And then somebody, uh, Randy Jordan, the running backs coach, needs to get in Gibson's head and try to fix his problem. The dude makes two or three horrible errors every game that can almost cost us the game, and he's got to fix that crap. Devin, initial take. I feel like the defense played amazing until it came down to having to shade Deshaun Everett, whatever his name is, in, and he's the one that gave up that touchdown. But on yep, the off- 22. Yep. On the offensive side of the ball, I feel like Scott Turner was trying to call plays up to the the prime time of the game. He wanted to make big plays, and Taylor Heineke can't throw that 15-yard out, which he tried to throw, and it was almost picked off. From the far hash, dude. I mean, my God. And it looked like he was trying to call plays up to the moment, but then again – kept running the ball, and like Phil said, the whole time I was scared Antonio Gibson was going to fumble. Me and Charlie were sitting there waiting for him to fumble. We knew it was coming, but he didn't. But he still made mistakes, stepping out of bounds. We can be a great team. It's just mistakes and the little things we we mess up. How many consecutive third and one opportunities did we have where we handed the ball off and came up short? It was at least three consecutive third three. and ones. Yes. Three and then, consecutive third and ones. Them, and two of them, I know for sure if Heineke pulled that ball, it would have been a first down. Well, Devin, you – Exactly. You, That's you, I was you, thinking the exact same you, thing. He has so got much to pull it. Yep. He ran zero read options. Zero. Yep. Maybe they were saving it for the Raiders. I don't know. But you can't save plays. Uh, this isn't like playing – 
Mississippi Valley Northwest Central Community College of the Poor, you can't say it plays. You're playing each week where the records are zero and zero in the NFL. And yep. look look at the schedule on a daily basis uh, to prove that is correct. Uh, the, the, the running was there for the most part until third downs. And the third downs, the conversion rate, I'm looking real quick, and normally – I have these things memorized. Five of 13 for Washington. Five of 13. And three of them were on third and ones consecutively. Convert any one of them, and it's a different ball game. I mean, on third and ones, Seattle would pack the box. Yes. They put everybody up there. I mean, shit, man. Throw a pass. Do a read option. Do a bootleg. Something different. It didn't work two times. You do the third time, it didn't work. And then the fourth time, it did work. They did a um, little action sweep out, and we got called for holding. Damn, man. That would have been a boot on the fourth one. 100%. I, I just feel like Scott Turner needs to put his players and his playmakers in more of a position to make plays and to keep us winning games. And then on yeah. the flip and- – Go ahead, Phil. Go ahead. Oh, the offensive line did a fantastic job. We didn't mention them last week, but those dudes go out there and they just beat the hell out of the other team. And all all the four that finished that game, (laughs) man, they manhandled Seattle. I've been telling Charlie for the past few weeks, they are way better than what they look on paper, the offensive line. They are. And defensively, I mean, Seattle has set – their NFL league tie twice this season with five consecutive three and outs for a, for Washington's defense to put them Seattle in that position and still not be able to have the game already in hand. That says something about Washington's inability to close out a game. When, when you have five consecutive three and outs, you only have the ball for 16 minutes, the entire game or 14 minutes, the entire game. Something on the offensive side was lacking. And the announcers are trying to make the story out of the Taylor Heineke thing. I think it's more, and like what Phil's saying, is more on Turner. 100%. Yeah. If you look at that game on paper, take the score away, and you look at it on paper, you would have thought that game was a blowout. 100%. It's, it comes down to play calling and putting their, uh, the best players in the position to make plays. So let's fast forward. We had three injuries that I'd like to talk about real, real fast. Do we find our fourth kicker for starters? Kind of have to. I mean, the dude pulled a hamstring, and quite frankly, those things don't go away. That's four weeks out. Ain't nothing you can do about it. And unfortunately, he was more our most consistent one. Number two, are we on our fifth string center yet? <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, but, you know, number 60, I begins with a V. We drafted him last year. He looked okay, but I wouldn't call him great. At least the snaps didn't roll back to Heineke. He's next then, man up. <laughs> and then lastly, uh, McKissick. That's huge. Uh, what do you – they really never said what it was. Uh, it looked like his head – went right into the thigh of the Seattle defender. And it looked to me like he had that stinger and everything just stopped working for him. Because his so, right arm doesn't look like it was moving. Yeah. So I think he was temporarily paralyzed. And I don't know if we're going to see him back this year. Because that mm-hmm. stuff, I mean, if they, they're they going to do a CT scan MRI, well, they'll do an MRI. Um that stuff's dangerous. If he's got any type of stenosis or any type of compression in his neck, he might his career might be over. So, and I think McKissick is our secret weapon. I mean, he won a game for us. He won Atlanta, and he won tonight. He scored both touchdowns. He got both touchdowns. I mean, I would look at the bright side though. They didn't put him in a neck brace or put him on a board or anything like that. So that's it, true. In their opinion, they may not think it's that severe, and that's a good sign. All right. And, I mean, Logan Thomas scored a touchdown, but inept officiating took it away. Worst call. 
Yep. It, that officiating tonight was horrible for both teams. I mean, it could have cost the game for both teams. It probably did for Seattle. But it could have cost us the game, too. It's incompetence. And, and I, I'm, I've made a cavalier statement in one of our podcasts that females have just as much opportunity and should have much, just as much opportunity to be as incompetent as male officials. And we saw it tonight. We saw both male and female incompetence. And that female official out there, I, I saw her a couple of times just look around and ask for help to see if a pass was complete or not. It's um, like, damn, I saw what were you well. doing? I saw that yeah. as well. And, and it's like, what are you doing? I mean, she couldn't call anything right. She wasn't even lined up correctly on the play. Uh, she was lost. I mean, it was like her first game. I mean, is, is she supposed to have a training official out there with her going with her? She was horrible. But the, the other officials were just as bad. So it was a complete F for the officials tonight. And Seattle should bitch about it, too. They got calls there at the end with that. I mean, it's just it's bad all the way around. Bad. Quick, yep. quick tangent, and I could be wrong about this, but I can tell you from coaching experience many times over, when you have two sub-500 teams playing against each other, you don't get the A officials. That's all I'm going to say. That's all <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say. you get officiating. That's all I'm going to say. I was, the wor- I was the worst high school official in the history of – Virginia high school football, ever. Tantor was the worst. One year, done. Let's fast forward because we, I, this is a victory. We are now inside the playoff line, if you can believe that. Insert Jim Mora comment here. Playoffs? But we are inside the playoff line. Next week, we have the 4 o'clock game in Vegas. Momentum's on our side, but Vegas – they just went to Dallas on Thanksgiving night, and the Raiders are finally on, back in the win streak after just looking so incomplete and incompetent after having to let Chucky go. So what type of Raider program do you think we're going to see? Who hell knows? The Raiders, one week they show up, and the next week they look like trash. Nobody knows what's going to happen with the Raiders. I don't know. We don't know what we're going to do. We're going to go out there to Vegas where anything goes. We, we might go out there and pull a Detroit Lions. I mean, that, that game, I wouldn't touch that game betting on it with anything. Uh, I would honestly say I feel like we're going to see a Raiders team that's fighting for their life because – they're going to have to win a lot of games to even have a chance for the playoffs. And I think they're going to come out and try to stick it to us. And I honestly couldn't tell you what Washington's going to do. Some games were there, some games were not. And going all the way to Vegas, I don't see much coming out of them. But I'm, I'm hoping for a win. Look, I know you, you can play the, the gunslinger gambler card perfectly on, on the Taylor Heineke show. But I think the way that Washington gets out of that game with the victory is the same formula they used tonight. Ball control, lots of time possessions, and limited possessions for your opponents. That's my thoughts. Well, we just came off a streak where we played three primarily zone defensive teams. And that's what we play, and that's what Taylor Heineke sees every day in practice. He's good against zones. He's not very good against man coverage and press coverage. So, I, from what I've seen and what we saw Thanksgiving, the Raiders run a lot of man. And I think that's going to give Heineke trouble. But my only remark off that is that leaves him open to run. You're going to see a lot of – Yeah, Heineke. but he's not running, Devin. But you're going to see a lot of it now because against a zone defense, you don't have much room to run. But a man defense yeah. – no one's on Heineke. He will run if he has the chance, and that that could be the key factor. If, if he'll run it, I'm yeah. not. I'm not confident that he wants to run. I think he does. I think he's on. He's got a leash on him, and maybe they'll take the leash off for this type of game. I don't know. It should be interesting. It's regardless. It's Sunday, four o'clock Eastern, and with it, they inch that much closer to the division lead, and before they go up there close out their five uh, remaining games, 
uh, all in the division, which is going to get interesting. Assuming they can get one more victory, it'll really get interesting. Final question, and we're going to leave with this. So before I go to that, make sure you subscribe to our, our, our show. Make sure you like, and more importantly, also comment away. We like to hear back from you. A lot of people leave some great takes and great, great posts. Some people troll ahead, and that's fine if you troll. Well, hey, you still watched it, so we get the credit for that. But we're going to leave with this comment. Phil, what's your take on, uh, on curses? You know, I, I sometimes, you know, we've got one of the crew that absolutely – drives me up the freaking wall because he calls the game as a Redskins victory, just like Levy did. And I love that part. But, you know, there's two and a half minutes left in the game. It's not freaking over, all right? We haven't won a Monday night game since, what, 2014 with well, Colt McCoy? And it, it even took some Colt magic to get that done. And, and we haven't won a game in these stupid uniforms. And then there's the whole Clint Longley curse that's been going on for the last 30 freaking years. You can't call a game like that. It's not over until it's over. And this game wasn't over until, what, four seconds left? This was a crazy ending. And we almost lost this one. And it was, it was unreal. We got another flag that saved our asses on special teams. And our special teams were just disgustingly bad tonight. And they got to stop that. And it's all the curse. It's all the curse's fault. 